Hey, what's up guys? Alex here with a new video, and today we're gonna to be talking about Canon C-RAW. So what is Canon C-RAW? Now, I can sit here and get super technical and pretend like I know what I'm talking about, or I can tell you high level uh, what I do know and what I do understand. So uh, Canon C-RAW is pretty much Canon's compressed version of the RAW file format. What that means is it's compressing a RAW file and pretty much shrinking it 40 to 45%. So you're getting pretty much half the size of a traditional RAW file with Canon C-RAW. You still get a RAW file format, you still get all the benefits, it's just a smaller file. Now usually when you compress, when you remove information, when you make things smaller, you lose image quality or you lose something, right? And as a photographer, especially a photographer like myself, pixel peeper and who values like the quality and everything, the last thing you wanna do is reduce the quality of the image you're delivering. I decided to try out Canon C-RAW last November in a wedding. Um, I'll tell you the story at the end of this video so I don't bore you, but uh, I tried it out and I did not notice a single difference. I'm talking about, I pixel peeped, I zoomed in, and I mean, I didn't see anything. And I was blown away that I could shrink my file sizes in half, right, and not lose image quality. So I went online and I Googled it and I found just very few articles on Canon C-RAW and pretty much everybody that's compared Canon C-RAW with just regular Canon RAW, they didn't notice a difference. So I started using it more and more and for the last eight months, it's been pretty much my primary file format I shoot for weddings, uh, engagement sessions, family sessions, everything I've been shooting on Canon C-RAW. So for this video, I decided, you know what? Let's put it to the test, let's shoot a set of images, uh, regular, CR3 RAW file format and can see RAW to see if we could really spot a difference if we zoom in and pixel peep. Uh, I did just, I think a handful of photos with the wifey outside, staying at home, following the orders. Uh, but I also did uh, two sets of photos right underexposed by two stops. So I guess instead of just continue to talk about it, let's go ahead and jump into the screen, kind of do a screen share and compare the files. Okay guys, so here are the images I have and uh, on the left hand side we do have the Canon RAW, on the right hand side we have the Canon C RAW and just from based on feedback from my previous videos, these are completely unedited files. So untouched, let's take a look. On the left hand side, uh, the file size is 27 megabytes and on the right hand side it is 14 megabytes, so pretty much a half. Let's go ahead and zoom in here. So. When you have a properly exposed photo like this, a compressed raw will not mean, they look identical, right? Uh, detail, um, you look at the image, like this is one to one, regular, like there's nothing here that you know, will be different, right? I can zoom into like the shadows and if we wanna like be super nitpicky, right? Let's go ahead and um, let's develop, like this is the regular raw file. I'm gonna push the shadows to that's dumb. 20, 24, right? And let's do this one to 24. And then let's go back to the library view, right? And again, left hand side is going to be the full size raw file. And when we zoom in, this is a shadows pushed. The same amount of detail is there. Same amount of dynamic range. Uh, C raw and regular raw are the same here for me. Um, and it's half the size, right? Uh, let's go ahead and jump to another set of images. So in this set of images, full size raw file, 26 megabytes. And when we look at the C raw, 11.48 megabytes, right? So let's go ahead and switch them up again. So um, here we have a full raw, here we have the C raw. We zoom in and again, identical. My wife's gonna hate me for including these photos with this little piece of food in her mouth or whatever. Um, looking again at the, the part that nobody looks at, right? But people are gonna call it out. Uh, the dynamic range is exactly the same. So really no difference in quality from what I'm seeing here. And if we continue on this image, on these images, it's gonna be the same thing, right? So if I continue kind of moving on to, to these photos here and I look at this one, which is the, uh, the C-RAW is, select. So see raw to the left at 14 megabytes. Um, now the left is the regular raw at 30 megabytes and we zoom in. So this is raw is a C raw identical, right? Um, 
let's go ahead. Here is where we might notice a super small difference and it's underexposed kind of recovering shadows and detail. And uh, I did that on these next set of images. So for this next set of images, um, we're gonna actually go into the develop module, right? So here is the regular raw file at 23 megabytes. And as you can see, underexposed two stops on purpose. Here is the C raw file at nine megabytes. So it's actually over 50% smaller underexposed two stops. Let's see, um, let's see the difference, right? Okay, so on this one, we're gonna go ahead and just lift the shadows a little bit and let's get the exposure back where it should be, which is two stops. And this is the regular raw file. Now we're gonna go ahead and go here to the compressed raw file and do the exact same settings and we'll make this our reference photo. And now let's compare, let's compare these images. So here on the left, we have the full size raw. Here on the right, we have the C raw and two stops recovered kind of shadows and exposure in Lightroom. And as you can see, as far as the face goes, the detail, it is identical. So um, here is where you might notice a small difference. And I mean, I might have to, I might have to even zoom in even more. Um, if you look at the shirt here, this is ridiculous. If you look at the shirt here on the regular raw file and you look at the shirt here on the compressed raw, you can see that there is more of this magenta noise coming from the recovered shadows on the C raw versus the regular raw file. Um, and if you look at the collar here, you can see significantly more of that magenta color noise on the C raw than you can on the regular raw file. Zoom out, they look the same. <laughs> um, so. Uh, the difference is there for sure when you're pushing your exposure to stops, right? Um, so what, what I'll tell you is this, like if you're looking to um, mess up the exposure by two stops, shoot regular raw. Um, but if you're going to be nailing exposure or within one to one and a half stops, I don't think it makes a difference, right? Um, two stops is a big amount, but even then, like the difference, you have to zoom in almost three to one to, to see it. And this is something that I'm sure you could manipulate even actually i'm not even sure you have to manipulate right it's just i'm pixel peeping to the fullest right now but there was a difference there now for the last set of images um i did the same thing underexposed two stops so let's take a look so here we have the raw file at 25 megabytes c raw at 11 megabytes let's go ahead and go into the raw file we're going to do the exact same thing so we're going to go ahead and bring it up two stops and we're just going to push the shadows to really Kind of test it right so i think 20 that's right there we're going to copy the settings we're going to make the full raw file the reference photo let's go ahead and go to the c raw file and again looking at the face everything looks the same looking at the shirt here now this this image had better lighting than the other image so looking at the details like there is i don't see any difference here and i am like hardcore zooming in now. I don't see any difference here in noise pattern or color noise. But again, here we're pushing, we're bringing the exposure back, shadows back, but it was already a better lit photo than the previous photo, right? So when really looking at what you can do, like for example, in this case, like there is no color noise in the shadows that I noticed. Let's go ahead and let's, let's be real stupid here. Let's zoom in on the grass, right? Because people are gonna wanna see this. Um, it looks the same. Um, so yeah, so kind of big thing to note, even in this type of lighting, if we reset it, right? Like it's still better lit than for say, let's say this image here. So depending again on the underexposure, uh, C raw will do the job, really not big of a difference here in this set of images. On this set of images with less light, of course there was more of a difference, but even then you really, really have to pixel peep. But there you have it. So I'm gonna continue shooting in Canon C-RAW. I don't see anything wrong with it. Smaller file sizes, same image quality. It's a win-win. Let's talk about how I discovered it. So this is an embarrassing story. Uh, I don't like sharing these stories too much, right? But I am human and I do make mistakes. So my wife and I show up to a wedding. Uh, before every wedding, I double check, triple check everything in my bag, right? Camera bodies, batteries, lenses, memory cards, everything. And because the Canon EOS R only has one SD card slot, I like switching out memory cards twice a day. So that's how 
kind of how I mitigate the risk, right? So my wife is shooting with one camera, I'm shooting with one. We're usually together at all times, different focal lengths, getting two different perspectives, but we're shooting the same moments together, right? So in case anything happens, we always have the other camera, right? Anyways, so we usually swap out memory cards after the ceremony. So we kind of do the first half after the ceremony, switch out memory cards into a new, new fresh set of memory cards. And we didn't do this because we're running out of space. We do this because again, reduce the risk of having a corrupt SD card ruin a whole wedding day, right? So swap out memory cards in between. So the ceremony ends at this wedding. I go to grab my memory cards and they're gone. They're missing. I left them at home. So again, we don't usually switch out memory cards because we're out of space. We switch out memory cards because of just being proactive. Uh, I look at the memory card and I mean, it's gonna be cutting it extremely close uh, if I don't change anything, right? If I shoot the way I normally shoot, I'm gonna run out of space, maybe three fourths of the way there. Uh, my wife and I both have 64 gig memory cards. So I start digging through the menus, right? And I'm freaking out. And then I see Canon C-RAW. So I'm like, what in the world is this? I Google it really quick and I find out it's Canon's compressed file format. I select it on my camera and I see that it literally doubles my memory card space. Like I will now make the whole wedding with Canon C-RAW. And uh, again, I do this extremely quick. The article, I just scroll to the bottom, right? Conclusion, conclusion, uh, no, no big difference. So I chance it, right? Shot the wedding in C-RAW, got home. Um, and that's kind of when I was like, wow, okay. Like C-RAW is the deal, right? Like it, it saved, it saved my, it saved me in this wedding, but also like the image quality was the same. Like I, I compared the images that I took obviously in the second half of the day with the first half of the day. And I didn't notice a difference. Now, again, I'm not underexposing by two stops, three stops. I'm, I, I'm always shooting for the perfect exposure. So there shouldn't be uh, too much of a difference, right? Uh, you should be able to replicate everything. And uh, in, in the end, like, I, that's how I discovered C-Raw in the, in the thick of the moment at this wedding. But uh, overall, that's kind of my quick story and how I discovered it. But anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any questions, like always, please drop it in the comments below and like, subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Have a good one, guys. Peace.